and happy Friday, everyone. My name is Michael Smith, the National Consumer Education Manager of Genome Canada. So thank you very much for joining me today. I'm coming to you live from the uh, Oakville Genome Sewing and Learning Center in Oakville, Ontario. And we're doing another A to Z with Genome. Uh, I can't believe it. Next week is going to be the last week uh, on Monday, I'm going to be doing Y for the yellow dot bobbin case as a heads up. And then um, next Friday, though, I'm going to be doing the recap of all the uh, A to Z. So you definitely want to tune in. That's um, Friday, July 10th for the recap. So in today's Genome Instagram, uh, Genome HQ Instagram Live, A to Z with Genome, we're doing the letter X. And when I was thinking, oh gosh, I don't think we have an X foot. What could X be? And I thought of X marks the spot. You know, in those um, treasure hunt pirate maps, they always have the big X where the buried treasure is. So I was thinking X marks the spot for our cloth setter because it is truly a treasure in your embroidery. So I will show you all about the cloth setter. So here's my sample of a big X. And then as a sneak peek, this is my sample for the yellow dot bobbin holder that again, I will talk about on Monday, but the cloth setter will help us with perfect placement for our embroidery. So in this beautiful Tamara Kate fabric, I have this cute little fringe flower that is built in embroidery to a number of our embroidery machines. So then I was able to place that directly in the center uh, using the cloth setter. So it's very cute. And the wonderful thing, ever since Janome has been producing embroidery machines, we're going on probably about 30 years, uh, since they've been doing embroidery machines for the home market, I believe there's a cloth setter for every embroidery machine, or certainly um, pretty close to it, because this is one of the Janome's uh, great innovations was the cloth setter. Now, this is uh, one that I found in the uh, treasure trove of the classroom. Um, I think this is from the 10,000. I'm not 100% sure. Uh, Celine, you would probably know. Uh, Celine, our educator from Montreal, she has been with Janome for a number of years. And yes, this is the cute little cloth setter and then now again from previous machines when the hoops were much smaller but now we have ooh that was my phone <laughs> but now we have cloth setters that are bigger to accommodate the larger hoops so there's a number of different cloth setters again always check with your genome dealer to get the correct cloth setter for your embroidery machine or embroidery combo machine Celine said it was for the 11,000. The 11,000. Okay, perfect. Thank you for clarifying that. I, again, I knew Celine would know. <laughs> she knows everything. And embroidery is her thing. I love it. Celine always says she wears her machine. Everything she wears is embroidered. It's beautiful. So, yes, the cloth setter will definitely help you with that uh, perfect uh, embroidery. So, this is the universal cloth setter. Again, there's, there's many different um, types. But the woo, universal cloth setter here allows you to hoop a variety uh, of for machines. So um, maybe you can see there's a A slot up here and a B slot with this little adjustable metal plate, and I'll show you that. Um, but then this allows us to attach different hoops from the different size carriages. You know, for machines like our uh, Memorycraft 15,000 quilt maker and the Memorycraft 12,000, their carriage is larger. So those hoops will be accommodated in the A slot. And then machines like the Skyline S9 and the um, 9850 with the smaller carriage, those will be accommodated in the B slot. And then even down here uh, for this uh, side mounting mechanism is for the embroidery only machines like the Memorycraft 500E or the Memorycraft 550E. They will fit in here. So again, this is the universal cloth setter. So it will accommodate a number of different uh, machines, the different hoops and how they attach. So this, for example, is a hoop that comes with the Memorycraft um, 500E and the 550E. And this 
will slide into the side here. So if you can see, I think you can see, can I leave this flat on the table? Yes, I think so. Then yes, you can see how they um, slide in here to the side and then this big arm comes back. And then even this big guy, a lot of people ask, oh, will it uh, work with the new big, uh, this is 14.2 by 7.9 inches, the big um, 36B hoop for the 550E. And yes, this big hoop will be accommodated on the cloth setter. So you can use it uh, if you need to in conjunction with this big guy. Again, this is why I need multiple hands here <laughs> to help because there's a lot of stuff. Uh, this hoop then is, again, for the like Skyline S9 or the 9850. So it would go again in the B slot and it's going to clip in just the way that it clips in on your embroidery carriage of your machine. And then I will show you then how to use all of this. So basically the cloth setter is going to help us line up our fabric and so then we can place our embroidery exactly where we want it. But the first thing you need to do when you get your cloth setter out of the box and, and put it together to attach this big arm, you'll see when I have it uh, clipped into place here, if I take my little grid that comes with all of the hoops, essentially now I say X marks the spot, but it's more like a, a crosshairs <laughs> uh, because then I want to line up the crosshairs. I don't know if you can see, can you see those crosshairs that are on the cloth setter? I'm going to line up those uh, crosshairs of the cloth setter with the crosshairs of my grid for my hoop and I can uh, center my fabric and my embroidery exactly because of that uh, crosshairs. So again, when you first get your cloth setter, you're going to hoop up some uh, stabilizer. And of course, for stabilizer, I love using our Madeira. I've mentioned this so many times in Janome HQ. I absolutely love it, of our A to Z with Janome. This is our Madeira starter set for um, many different types of stabilizer. There's tearaway, there's iron on, there's water soluble, and this little booklet tells you exactly how to use them all. So that's very good. Check with your Janome dealer to order this Madeira starter set. So hoop up a stabilizer, whichever you want to use. And then I like to do, you can hoop your stabilizer and your fabric, of course, together. Or a lot of the times I like to just hoop my stabilizer. And then with our artistic tack spray, which I love so much, then I would spray my stabilizer and then lay my fabric on top and smooth it down. So I float my fabric uh, out of the hoop, basically. I always hoop my stabilizer, but then again, sometimes I like to float my fabric so I don't have to worry about the hoop leaving an impression around the fabric. Uh, this would be good if you're using like a napped fabric, like a velvet, for example. Um, you would get, if you hooped it, you would get what we call hoop burn. Uh, the, the hoop would leave an impression on that velvet, which you may not then want. Uh, so then again, using your artistic tack spray, helps hold your fabric in place. And then don't worry about if you get some overspray on your hoops because we have an artistic tack cleaner. This does an amazing job to clean up your embroidery hoops. So if ever you get some overspray, this will help uh, take it off. So once I get my stabilizer and my fabric in my hoop, I'm going to then take it over to the machine you want to follow me over here <laughs> to the machine and I want to be on the main screen regardless of what embroidery machine you have if it's the again uh, embroidery only like 500e 550e or you've got the combo machines like the Skyline S9 and the 9850 uh, the uh, 12,000 memory craft 15,000 uh, I want to be on the main page of our embroidery screen and I'm going to select our little flower of the designs. 
and then go back up to the little flower again. And this gives me all the categories of designs that are built into the machine. And I'm gonna scroll through to the end, uh, regardless of what your machine you have, the calibration pattern is gonna be at the end of all of the designs. And again, more information of this calibration pattern and what to do with it and all that is in your manual as well, uh, depending on uh, whatever machine that you have, it is in the manual. But I'm gonna scroll through all my designs to find the calibration pattern, and I'm gonna select that. It defaults to the SQ14 hoop, the five and a half by five and a half inch hoop uh, that I believe comes standard with all of the embroidery machines, whichever yours has. Um, so I have that already hooped up and then I would stitch this out. And it's going to look exactly like that. <laughs> Again, for time's sake, I thought I'll just stitch this ahead of time. So I have my SQ14 hoop here. It's already hooped again with my stabilizer, my fabric, I have my calibration pattern and it stitched out this X, if you will. And what that is, then when I lay this down, now because this is for my Memory Craft 15,000, I'm gonna use the A slot. So I take this over to the claw setter and I clamp in my hoop, just like I do on my uh, embroidery machine carriage and I take this arm down and I want to line up the red crosshairs that are on this arm of the claw setter with the crosshairs that my machine stitched out. Now you can see, ooh, let me move that, uh, you can see they are not lined up but there are screws here on this metal plate so you can loosen the screws and adjust the metal plate however you need to, to get it lined up well, perfectly. Again, I'm sort of on an angle there, but again, you want it just lined up. So you can adjust the screws however you need to, to get it all lined up, and then you will tighten it and lock that into place. And then, so there, now that you know this cloth setter, the crosshairs on the cloth setter represent the crosshairs of your embroidery machine, so then you know they're going to stitch in the same uh, position. So after I've got that calibrated, I can remove this piece of fabric. I have another hoop here, <laughs> so that makes it nice and easy. So now when I want to use this and position my embroidery perfectly, I'm going to, in this case, this is a hoop for the um, 9850 or the, again, the, the uh, Skyline S9. So I've got it in the, in the B slot. But so if I want to use this claw setter now to uh, position my embroidery, we're going to lock in our uh, bottom hoop and then take our stabilizer, make sure the little screw is open, take in our stabilizer, and then whatever kind of fabric you're using, I'm using this gorgeous Tamara Kate fabric. Now, possibly you could see ahead of time, to help me position it, I've actually folded uh, where I want to uh, center my design. So I've actually folded it um, to create the center here of this flower. You could mark this with uh, chalk or your favorite marking pencil, or even um, a lot of times I don't actually like to mark my fabric with like a pen or anything, because I, I worry about it disappearing afterward. Uh, so even like to score it with this point turner, for example, uh, you could do that. And then I'm going to lay this down over my stabilizer. And I love using this claw setter because this really acts as a third hand. I know my hoop is in a uh, position. I'm not chasing it around the table as I finesse, you know, this fabric and the embroider or in the stabilizer. Then I take my inner hoop and I just kind of lay that over. Roughly, I haven't snapped it into place yet because now I'm going to bring down this arm of the claw setter. And maybe you can see, can you kind of zoom? Yes, zoom down and see, because now I'm going to use the 
crosshairs that are on that arm of the claw setter here to help me position the fabric exactly where I need to. So I can fine tune it. And again, it acts as your third hand. So you can really get this exactly where you need it. So once I see over my head, I see, oh yes, that's exactly where I want, right in the middle. And again, I've already pressed in some uh, crease marks here to help me line up the little notches that are at the side of my hoop as well. So that definitely helps keep everything uh, centered and everything square. And I can again fine tune it a little bit because I haven't fully clamped in this hoop yet. So when I know, okay, whoops, it was good, that it's like, okay, it's exactly where I want it. Then I press down firmly to sink in my inner hoop to the outer hoop and then I find the little screw and tighten that up. So then that helps you with your perfect placement. You can always double check as well by putting your uh, little grid back on. Now make sure as well when you're when you're putting your grid on that you've got like the left and the right facing up <laughs> that you don't want to flip it around the other way. So I know that I've got it in the correct spot so you can always double check again with your little grid. Now if you were using a uh, template to position your fabric and the template I got just, uh, again, these are the built-in designs from whatever machine you're using and whoops, from uh, Embroidery Editor. Uh, for example, I went into my Embroidery Editor software on my computer, but you could also use the Artistic Digitizer software and again, have a design there and then print out your template which then looks like that. And again, it, there's a arrow pointing up. You want that in the same direction of the top of your hoop, which corresponds to the big red arrow of your uh, crosshairs on your cloth setter. So I would take my template here and cut it down. In fact, I'd even go so far and I'd cut around that shape entirely. Or you could print out, instead of just on regular copy paper, uh, print your templates out on uh, vellum or tracing paper sheets that'll go through your printer. Or, or then you could even take this and then put a piece of tracing paper over it and trace out that design a little more accurately. Uh, and then if you wanted to either if it's safe for your fabric, do a little artistic tack spray on the back of this piece of uh, paper, and then you could stick that down where you wanted it on your fabric. Or if you're gonna pin your template in place, use the really, really fine pins. Um, at home, I've got silk pins. They're really fine. You can pin through delicate fabrics like silk, and you're not gonna leave a hole. Uh, you definitely don't want the pins with the big chunky plastic head uh, because then if I say, oh, I want this template, you know, right in the, in the center of my fabric here, then I would pin it down into place because then you want to, and you want to use like the flat pins because then you want this arm to come down. And if you had a pin with the big, um, you know, bulbous head on it, then it wouldn't let this arm stay flat. So that's why I use a very fine, delicate pin. So if I pinned my template in place, yes, I know it's exactly where I want it. Then remove your template before you take this to the embroidery machine. <laughs> and then, yes, then I know this is all in place. So then I would remove my hoop and then I would take it over to the embroidery machine to embroider, which I've already done this little uh, half of this fringe flower. So I'm just gonna go back to find my fringe design here in my machine. And there I'm going to change my hoop to the SQ14 and hit OK. And then I'm just gonna advance to my second color and then away I go. Now I like using, because again, I floated my fabric. I like using the, uh, again, artistic tack spray to hold down my fabric, but I like using the base function that's also built into all of our Janome embroidery machines. So I have 
selected the little base around my design so I know that's going to help anchor my fabric as well. If you'll see this little thread that, uh, again, when I start my designs, uh, start stitching, then you've got that little tail of thread. Always, I used to do it myself, I admit, I wouldn't always stop my machine when I reach in and clip this thread, but oh, you know, it's just not worth it. Uh, don't take the chance, so stop your machine and then come in with your scissors. Uh, I love these. Uh, pointed uh, curved uh, scissors uh, they say Janome on them so I always say oh they work even better if they say Janome on them uh, but uh, your dealer for example would carry these uh, scissors they're great for embroidery because then again it lets me get right down on top of my design but because they're pointed upward I don't have to worry I'm not going to clip into my fabric I'm just going to trim off that thread flush so I'm not going to have any thread tails and then I can start finishing my embroidery design. So again, always stop your machine if you're going to get in there with any tools or your fingers to, to um, you know, smooth out your fabric. And again, so away this will go and then I've got my beautiful little fringed flower that you can maybe see right there or let me grab my sample which I've already done. So then there is my cute little adorable fringe flower. Uh, once it's finished stitching, I go on the back side. I've already finished this. I go on the back side and that's when I trim the, the threads to make it fringe. So it's very cute. So again, all helping with the claw setter to allow you that beautiful, perfect placement. There is done. So there is my cute little fringe flower in the center of my other flower there. So. Again, a very useful tool. I always love the more hands, the better. So that is our Janome HQ Instagram Live brought to you by the letter X for the cloth setter. Again, there's pretty much a cloth setter for every embroidery machine out there, but the one that I was demoing today is the universal cloth setter that has it set up for the various uh, different machines. So those of you that have, uh, I know many people that have a 15,000, but they also have a 500 or the new 550E, so they can maximize their time embroidering. So the cloth setter will accommodate a variety of machines. So I hope you all enjoyed that. Have a very fabulous weekend. If there's no further questions, I will sign off and then I will see you all Monday at 1 p.m. Eastern at Janome HQ as we do Y for the yellow dot bobbin holder. So have a fabulous weekend. I will say goodbye. Tanya, do you want to flip around and say goodbye? Yes, yeah, fantastic. So thank you all for joining me. Have a wonderful weekend. Bye. Bye.